Today we, uh, we will hear uh, member statements from the honorable members from the district of Lewisport, Twillingate, uh, Mount uh, Pearl North, Lab West, uh, St. John's East Kitty Vitty, and Harbor, Maine. And uh, before I recognize the member for Lewisport, Twillingate, uh, one of the changes that we uh, that I didn't mention at the uh, uh, start was we have a tradition where we, uh, if uh, someone is celebrating a, a, a hundredth birthday, uh, we usually stand and applaud and uh, and help them celebrate their birthday. So I ask that, uh, given the circumstances, that members, in the case that such a situation should arise, uh, that members uh, applaud while sitting sitting down under these circumstances. So the Honourable the Member for Lewisport, Twillingate. Thank you. Eyes, but now sit, to recognize a constituent of mine, Ms. Myrtle Odnott, a resident of Pleasantview Manor in Lewisport. Myrtle was born on Indian Islands of Notre Dame Bay on May the 16th, 1920, and spent her early years with her two brothers and sisters on Perry's Island. Her father was a fisherman by trade and owned his own schooner. So most of their summers were spent exploring the island and picking berries, while her dad fished the Labrador coast. Miss Odnott married and had two children, Lorraine and Alan, before making the move to Lewisport in the early 1950s. People around our area know her for being a master seamstress, and she still keeps busy using her quilting and sewing skills. Mrs. Odnott is also a talented, self-taught pianist, and even took a few minutes to play a song at her own party. In spite of COVID-19 restrictions, celebrations were held virtually with messages of love from family and friends, both near and far. I'm told that she had a wonderful time. Mr. Speaker, I ask all honorable members to extend best wishes and continued health to Mrs. Myrtle Odnott on celebrating her 100th birthday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable the Member for Mount Pearl North. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On February 27th at the Mount Pearl Sports Alliance Hall of Fame Annual Athletic Awards Ceremony, Gerald Butt was inducted into the Hall of Fame's Athlete Builder category. Jed's career began in baseball in the late 1950s when he first joined the Little Leagues. In the 70s, he played with the Mount Pearl Senior League, winning many awards and championships. <clears throat> After his playing career, Jed began building the support, sport. In the early 1980s, he was instrumental in re-establishing Mount Pearl minor baseball. In 1994, Jed helped form Mount Pearl Baseball Umpires Association. He umpired games for several years and served as a coordinator of umpires during the Canadian National Championship in 1997. He has served on the executive of the Mount Pearl Softball Association and Tennis Club, two other sports which he also played and contributed to. He has also coached soccer, basketball, and as a junior high school teacher, coached male and female basketball teams for over 20 years. 35 years ago, Mr. Boat was my grade seven homeroom teacher. As an amazing teacher, I really looked up to him, and I still do today, for his contribution to support and community. Please join me in honoring Jed Butt for his dedication to sports and sports development in Mount Pearl. The member for Labrador West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to give recognition to an individual and a group of volunteers who have gone above and beyond to help their community. Shannon Curlew started a group called A Mask for Everyone in Labrador West to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Shannon has set out on a mission to make a mask for every individual in Labrador West. Thanks to Shannon and her team of intake team, including Noreen Kareen, Bridget Baker, and Jen Brown, the the team delivered, uh, and also, sorry, 22 volunteers, mask makers. Over 800 masks were produced and delivered to residents, so everyone can have one. Uh, parenting with, partnering with the Twin City Seniors Group, they secured funding and were able to make other masks at no direct cost, but a, uh, they are asked to volunteer donations. With the donations raised, they were able to purchase 50 gift cards valued at $50 each from local grocery stores to help seniors in the region. There has been many similar stories throughout Labrador, a group stepping up making masks. Uh, masks for Labrador, Labrador Upholstery and Happy Valley Goose Bay had similar missions and they have helped multiple people in the region and beyond. Their ability to, uh, for our constituents to help during a crisis, it just goes to show how strong Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are. I ask all honorable members in joining me in thanking these groups across the province that have worked hard and their dedication to the communities during these difficult times. Thank you.
The Honourable the Member for uh, St. John's East, Kitty Vitti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Through his systems-based mindset and his appetite for social change, Doug Pawson leads the team in developing and implementing the St. John's Community Plan to end homelessness. Doug brings over a decade of community-based economic development experience to this role, having championed many social enterprise initiatives in the Ottawa region. End Homelessness St. John's exists to prevent and end homelessness in St. John's. As they work in collaboration with community stakeholders, End Homelessness are leaders in the St. John's community plan to end homelessness. The work of End Homelessness is important and extensive. You will find members of his team implementing the coordination and standardization of the homeless serving system while using the housing first philosophy, leading collection, analysis, and sharing of information to support ending homelessness in our community, and securing the necessary leadership and resources to support the community plan to end homelessness, while ensuring representation from all stakeholders integral in ending homelessness. It is an honour to celebrate Doug Pawson and his team and to support them as they work to make St. John's the next city to end homelessness. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable the Member for Harbour, Maine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased today to recognize a woman from Chapels Cove in the District of Harbour, Maine. I find it fitting to speak of this lady today on the very first sitting in this honorable house with members being present after COVID-19. Ms. Rita Hickey is a 92-year-old woman who is well known for her amazing smile, her kindness towards others, and her strong, fun-loving spirit. Mr. Speaker, everything changed for Mrs. Hickey on April the 2nd, 2020, when she learned she had contracted the coronavirus. At 92 years of age, she knew she was a member of the most vulnerable group to survive the virus. Although a terrifying time for Mrs. Hickey and her family, I am happy to report that through inner strength, prayer, and the outpouring of love and support from neighbors, friends, and people throughout the province, she won the battle against COVID-19. Although feeling blessed and incredibly grateful, she is also saddened that other people were not as fortunate in surviving the disease. I am proud as her MHA to acknowledge Mrs. Hickey today, and I would ask all members to join me in celebrating the spirit of this resilient woman and her victory against the odds. Thank you.